Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be going over the post-processing add-on I've made for the Blender Game Engine. So if you haven't already got it, there's a download link in the description below. If you want to go ahead and download it, then all you have to do is open up Blender like so, go to File, User Preferences, and then go to the Add-on section, then go to Install from File, then navigate to where you have the file saved. So for you, it's probably in your downloads, then click on it and go Install from File. Now Blender will tell you it's added some modules and then also in here you'll have a new add-on. So here's some information on the panel, all the things it does, all the people that helped me make it. And the most important thing probably here is the location. It's in the game render panel. So you won't be able to see it if you're in cycles or blender render. So let's go ahead and click the checkbox to enable it and then click save user settings. This means it will always load up when you open up Blender instead of you having to go and check this every time you want to use it. Then once you've done that, click close. And from here, what we can do is change it to Blender Game. And now in the render panel, you'll scroll down, but there won't be an add-on. Now the reason for that is that the add-on only works exclusively on camera objects. So if you select the camera here, you should be able to scroll down with a new section. So now what I'm going to do is click on the top right hand corner and I'm just going to drag it up so it's easier to use. And then what we can do is add our basic scene. So let's go ahead and add ourselves a plane as the floor, move this over here, maybe add ourselves a monkey in the background and add ourselves a cylinder. All right. Cool. So let's go ahead and give these some colors so it's not boring. So maybe blue for that, give this a green color, and make this orange. Select the camera here. Now as an example, let's choose depth of field, and then click add filter. Now you notice up the top here, we'll have added depth of field to the object camera. So let's go over to the game logic setting. So we can see what we're doing, go over into texture mode. Now also for the shading here, we'll have to choose GLSL. Alright, so on the left here we have two properties and these are relevant to the script that you've added. So depth of field we have f-stop and focal length. f-stop is basically the intensity and focal length is the size of the camera sensor. So right now if we press numpad 0, we'll choose our item, for example this one, to focus on and we set our f-stop to something like 2 and press P. you notice we can see just that item and everything else gets blurred. Now another important thing to remember is if you scroll down to the section here, it has a warning that says make sure the camera clipping is the same in the filter script. So if we go to our camera here, you notice the clipping is starting at 0.1 and ends at 100. So for example, say I had it at 500, this would be a problem because the script wouldn't work properly. So what I would do is go into my depth of field script and I'd scroll down until I get to the camera clipping start and end and update this one. So these properties on the left here are the very simple properties. If you want to do more advanced stuff, you can actually edit the script here on the right and you can update any values you want to change. So let's go ahead and add another filter. So I'm going to add myself some noise and then I'm going to add myself a levels filter. So also here we have a small information section for the filter order. This is sort of generic and depends on the situation. So as you notice here on my levels, I'm going to add that last because it's the color here. Now if you want to, you can also rearrange these just basically with the pass number. An easy way to think about it is that the last filter will take all of the outputs from any other filters you have applied before it. So a good example of this is if we go ahead and remove our noise and remove our depth of field. If for example, we go ahead and add a water filter and then we go ahead and add SSAO. So you notice the order that we've put them in, we've put water first, which will warp the screen and then we've tried to add shading to that afterwards. So when you press play, you'll notice the objects have these weird dark artifacts around them. And the reason for that is that the SSAO has to take the output from the water and then add its own section to it. An easier solution would be to set pass number to zero for the shading, so the shading is first, and then over here, set the water to one. And so now we'll have our shading applied and we'll also have our water effect. Now for the SSAO filter, it is almost crucial that you get this right. If this is wrong, for example, 0.5, we won't get any shading at all. So you have to make sure these two values are the same as on your camera. 
So there we go guys, that's the end of this video, hopefully you enjoyed it, if you did feel free to leave a like, comment or share down below, all of that stuff would be greatly appreciated. If you have any bugs or anything that goes wrong with it, definitely let me know with a comment or an email or something like that. But apart from that, hope you guys enjoyed the add-on, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.